welcome. In today's demonstration, we are talking about proportion. I'm using a, a, an image from Google for a lack of a better source right now. But before we get into the discussion of proportion, I need to get this gesture on here just so if you'll stick with me for a minute. Basically, I have the gesture on here, kind of you know, basic proposition of where things will be. I'm noticing there are quite a few, you know, proportional issues, and so that's pretty typical. You know, when we finish the gesture stage, we haven't really fully considered the, the proportions and having things exactly accurate. So there, there will be things to that need to be fixed in your drawing. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's part of the fun of the drawing as soon as we realize that that's part of the process. You know, if, we think, if, we, if we go into the drawing thinking that we're going to draw perfectly the first time, that becomes an exercise of anxiety rather than an exercise of exploration. Because this is an exercise of exploration, I'm happy uh, to go through the drawing and look for proportional issues and try to solve the puzzle of how to make it look and feel like the pose and the you know, person that we're drawing or the figure that we're drawing or the thing that we're drawing it doesn't really matter this way of considering proportion applies to anything one of the issues that i have with uh, traditional methods of proportion is that they're not adaptable for example I, I, i'm sure you've uh, many of you have seen that typical Greek and Roman idea that humans were seven and a half heads tall and the gods were considered like eight heads and above. And so you have like these head measure, you go with head measurements, right? And so you measure down like one chin and then to the, to the uh, fifth rib or the nipples and then to the navel and then to the pubic synthesis and then up from the feet it's two heads to the knee, and then from the knee, it's two heads to the pubic symphysis, right? Uh, imagine you, many of you have seen that. This is, a, this is a great way to think about proportions if you're a sculptor, because you're, making, you're actually making the thing, right? So these proportions will be useful. If you're drawing, though, the pose is always shifting. You, you know, like we have foreshortening in this leg and she's sitting down and so we don't have, she's not going to be seven and a half heads uh, tall, right? Maybe overall she would be seven and a half to eight heads tall. But the problem is, is in drawing is this, it doesn't, it's not an adaptable way of doing proportions. If I'm sitting here measuring head, 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 it doesn't always work. It's like trying to force a way of measuring in that doesn't really work, but it's kind of the method that we've been taught. And so we use it because it kind of works. And sometimes it, you know, if it's in the anatomical pose, it, position, it works. In my opinion, a far superior way of considering proportion. We will use three tools to accomplish proportion. The first is angulation, which is finding the angle from landmark A to landmark B. So angulation. The second tool is triangulation. And this is really the meat of the discussion today, is triangulation. You know? uh, the nice thing about this method of considering proportions is that it's taking something that we subconsciously do already, which is triangulating the spatial relationships of things. You know, I argue that we're all masters of this already because it's the reason why we can walk down the sidewalk texting and messaging on our phones or talking on our phones. And at the same time, we know what temperature it is. We know how far to step down a, a curb. We know how to, if the, if the light is red, 
or green or if uh, an old lady or a dog or a kid in a stroller or you know our entire surroundings and we, we can keep track of all you know an infinite number of different things just subconsciously you know so we're doing this subconsciously already there are a lot of other examples of this where it's really valuable and so I'm applying the same idea to drawing the triangulation being the relationship the spatial relationship of landmarks A, B, and C. And then this, this becomes like A, B, C over and over and over again, like a thousand times, right? And so the triangulation is the meat of this discussion. But then it really is helpful to uh, find halfway So finding halfway, we'll talk about those three things. Right now I have a few proportional issues that I need to resolve in this drawing and so I'll just take you through um, those things. The most valuable landmarks to triangulate will be at the joints because that's where you know bending happens. And angulate first because we have to, uh, but then triangulation is what we're going for. So we want to do all the major joints, the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. Those are the primary, um, the main joints. So, you know, from this knee to her left elbow. This might feel a little awkward at first, so you might want to take a very specific point um, eventually. But right now, we can just draw that stick figure, you know, indicate the joint with a, a circle, have a line, another circle, have a line to the wrist, another circle, have a line to, you know, potentially the, the hand like that, right? So this is the position she's in. And uh, we'll triangulate those main joints, okay? So shoulder to elbow, is that angle right? Can draw the line, hold the pencil, find the angle of, our, of the line we drew. We can just go over to, you know, look over to our reference and see if it's the same angle just to double check. Eventually you'll learn to trust yourself and, and uh, you won't have to check as much you know, when this becomes a more natural, when it starts feeling more natural. You can see in the elbow here, it's a, it's a mess, right? So I'm not too worried about it. Just, just draw lightly and don't commit too soon. Okay, so elbow to this elbow looks Looks on, this elbow to this knee, that looks pretty good. The top of the knee to the bottom of the olecranon. So I'm look already, you know, try to be a little bit more specific. You know, top of the knee all the way to the medial malleolus of her right leg. So I'm going straight to that bone, the ankle. I'll go from that medial malleolus or the, just the central mass, or the overall mass of that ankle to the overall mass of her left knee. So from right ankle to left knee, her left knee to this, uh, her right knee, it works. Angle from her left knee to her left ankle, so that looks pretty close. Go from ankle to ankle, that looks pretty close. You can see, you can see pretty clearly a triangle, you know, if you, if you draw them out. I'm drawing with silver, so I'm, I can't erase, and so I'm, I don't, I can't, I can't get rid of this after I draw it, so I'm not going to draw it really strongly or really dark I should say but maybe I will just for the sake of the video so we have a you know triangle from here to here triangle from here to here and then I'll just draw around this later triangle from here to here, triangle from here, to here. going back to this hip where's the relationship of the greater trochanter and you can see like a little bump you can usually see the greater trochanter pretty well on people so it's the central mass of that hip an angle to this knee. So it looks like I got that pretty well. I'll go from the hip to her this ankle. And you can see you can see one, two, three triangles already. Uh, the here wrist to the shoulder is another triangle. So it seems like you know potentially my proportions aren't as off as I thought they were some distance the top of the head feels really tall to me that's where finding halfway is really valuable because if I know my absolute bottom of my composition 
on the absolute top of my composition. I know my overall height because, well, it's right here. And so all I've got to do is find, you know, let's bring this over here. We can bring this over here to the edge of the page. We can find that half, uh, let's see, it looks like, a, looks like approximately there. We can measure that by holding our pencil using the bottom of our finger, line that up with the, or, you know, like, maybe I'll just use my pencil because it has this white thing. Yeah, it's kind of almost perfect. So right at the bottom of the white there, and then from the, yeah, so my middle is pretty on. If it wasn't on, you know, if, if, I, if I had indicated it here first and then tried that, I would have just had to bring this down, you know, find, the, find exactly your halfway, and then bring that over. Indicate where half is. And ask yourself, what part of the body, what part of her body is at the halfway. According to my drawing, it looks like it is, you know, below the navel, kind of just, you know, in her lower abdominal wall. Uh, try to find a landmark. There's not really a good landmark for me to use, so I'm gonna, I'll just, it has to be an approximation for now. So I will uh, come to my reference, I'll, you know, hold my hand like this. Like if I was doing it on my drawing, I would do this over my reference though. But to show you, I'll do it over my drawing. I'll hold my pencil uh, at the bottom of the composition and my finger, hold my finger at the bottom of the composition and then match my, my uh, top of my pencil there. And uh, so it should be about there, right, in my reference. So I'll bring that over. In this case, the arm uh, needs to be straight. If we're finding angles, the arm doesn't need to be straight, but since we're dealing with a proportional issue, then we want to keep our arms straight. My camera's gonna be in my way, but... Yeah, and so I'm looking at my proportion. I'm looking at where I've got that, and that's not half. So that is a serious proportional issue in my drawing. I'll fix that for sure. Okay, it looks like the where the pubic symphysis meets the leg right here, that needs to be half. That means I've got my hip structure way, you know, approximately like about three quarters of an inch almost, or half of the, you know, like three quarters of an inch too low. So that means before I get too far, I want to bring that up because this is my overall composition. So I, you know, this is a time Really, it is a time to be fearless in those kind of corrections, and I'm drawing with silver points, so it's, it's, uh, you know, there's not a lot of room for being afraid to make changes because I can't erase, right? So I can't clean this up, so it, it gets visual, it'll get visually pretty messy, and that's one of the challenges of drawing with silver point because how often are we exactly correct in our proportions? I don't think anyone's exactly perfect proportions the first time every time. Maybe, but not me. So I've got to fix these. So I'll bring the leg up here. At the same time, I don't want to stay too. I don't want to. I don't want to get too strict and start darkening things because then uh, it becomes an issue. So and actually that. That actually makes sense. Let's see if it. Uh... So when I do this, because it's such a big uh, surgery, I think it's kind of a surgery. So uh, it'll be important for me to. reconsider the entire gesture. For me, that's part of the fun of the drawing process. It's like now I have this puzzle, I have some obstacle I have to overcome, and then I don't know what the drawing's gonna look like at the end, you know, because it's a kind of messy right here. So how do I pull that back together to make it look uh, still like a draw, like a good drawing, you know, and have that 
such a disgusting scar right in the center of, of the pose. But that's, I mean, that's really one of the things I like is that I feel like no drawing I make is ever the same. I'm not the same ever, any, like any day, you know, like I don't draw perfect ever. Some days I have issues with proportion, some days I have issues with shading. If I'm drawing it with an eraser, I can erase and that's comfortable, you know, that's kind of playing, you know, there's no commitment to anything because you can always erase it. But with silver point, it challenges me to push through my mistakes. And I think that's a unique thing with silver point. It's a unique thing with uh, drawing with a pen. Any, any medium you can't erase with. That interests me because that strengthens my mind. That strengthens my senses. I'm really into that, you know. When I first checked the knee relationship, it, it seemed like it made sense. So I'm gonna really double check it. It looks like it's straight across, top of the knee, bottom of the olecranon. Well, I'll stick to that. You know, we're talking about triangulation today, but in another discussion, we'll talk about uh, the variety of different spatial relationships that we have and how to make use of them. That'll be a good discussion to have in the future. Well, that, to me, that feels it's going to feel a lot better when the drawing is finished. So you can see the value of finding your halfway. Like, I don't know how many of you uh, have that kind of issue, proportional issues where the legs sometimes are too long or too short. And that's what happened here is my torso was too long. I felt like, you know, the head, her head was way up, way too high. And the legs were too down. The foot needs to come up. That's the concept for today. And uh, I'll stick with it. I'll just keep, you know, maybe it might take me the next hour and a half to three hours to really get the proportions right. And, uh, and I'll just stick with it until I'm pretty confident that, that the proportions are correct. And when the proportions are correct, only when the proportions are correct, and when I'm drawing with silver, if I'm drawing with charcoal or some, or painting or something, I don't really, it doesn't matter, you know, because you can always go over it. It really doesn't matter what you do with your charcoal drawing or, or uh, painting because there's, you know, it's so forgiving. But with silver point, I wanna make sure my proportions are accurate before I start shading. Because if I start trying to shade something too early with silver point, without getting the proportions right, I'm setting myself up for complete failure. There are so many corrections that need to be made to make things accurate, to make the drawing successful, that if I use a poor drawing strategy, then it, it, it won't work, it will not work. Whereas in charcoal or uh, graphite or oil painting, you can have a poor strategy, you can have a terrible strategy, and you can hide, hide behind a, a really bad strategy by making endless corrections to that. And then in fact, in, in painting, when you do that, it's called layering, and then that's interesting. But uh, silver point doesn't have that same strength as oil paint. So I'll make sure that my proportions are as, as uh, good as I can, and then I will start shading afterward. You know, like when I'm in gesture, when I'm thinking about gesture, I'm thinking about, you know, lines of linear extension, lines of rhythm, how things move. When I'm thinking about one concept, I'm thinking about that concept. Right now I'm thinking about proportion. These are the three main tools for proportion, and that's where my mind will stay for a while. When I think my proportion is accurate, I will step back and I'll consider the gesture all over again. That's the discussion. If you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to leave comments in the, or wait, yeah, questions in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel and let's have a good time.